Hi everyone. I hope you had a chance to complete the factory exploration that you were given and maybe started to realize some of these ideas on your own. So to begin with, I just want to refresh your memory about how to multiply two binomials. And some people like to say, oh, I will foil these things. Now, foil isn't a verb, so I'm never going to say, let's foil these things. I'm just going to say, let's multiply them. But what do we mean by foil? We mean multiply the first terms together, then the outside terms together, then the inside terms, and then the last terms. So for instance, x times x gets me x squared, x times 2 gets me 2x, negative 3 times x gets me negative 3x, and negative 3 times 2 gets me negative 6. And we're just going to combine all those things together. So I get x squared minus 1x, or just x, minus 6. So that's one way of multiplying. Um, and the other way that I've noticed some people um, doing it is to think of it as area. So let's say that we have this rectangle, and this side has a length of 2x plus 5, and let's say its height is 3x minus 2. So if we were to find the area of this, that would require a multiplication of the two binomials. So we could split these up and say that we now have a rectangle here that is a 3x by 2x. Well, that area would be 6x squared. This box's area here would be 15x, since its width is 5 and its height is 3x. This one here would be negative 4x, and this one would be negative 10. And then again, we'll just combine our terms here for 6x squared. Uh, let's see, these combine to plus 11x, and then we have minus 10. So in multiplication, you know, there's a few different ways of thinking about it, but in the end, the, the answers will, will come out to be the same. So multiplication is thought of as going in one direction, and now I'd like to go in the opposite direction. So here I have two quadratics, and I would like to factor them. Well, according to our factoring exploration, there's only one way, or there's only a unique way, to factor these polynomials if we're allowed to factor. I'm going to put something else in the directions here. Over the set of polynomials with integer coefficients. Okay, meaning that if um, I were thinking of things that multiplied to 6, I would only be allowed to use integers, 1 times 6, 3 times 2. I wouldn't be able to use 12 times 1 half. So now that we, we know that there's only one way of factoring this, we should all have the same answer when, when doing it. So we like to look at this term right here, the ax squared term, and the c term. Now, just as you saw when we did multiplication, it's very easy to figure out what two things will multiply to x squared. So remember, we're, we're factoring, so we're going back to this form of two binomials being multiplied. Um, let's see, to get x squared, I would say 1x squared times 1x squared is the only way of getting that if I were to have integer coefficients. Now, for 6, I have a little bit of a choice here. So I might even want to write that down. 1 times 6, 3 times 2. Ooh, but remember, we also can multiply negative 1 and negative 6 to get positive 6, and negative 3 and negative 2. So I'm seeing four choices that multiply to, to positive 6. So how are we going to determine which one is the correct one? Well, we haven't even thought about this 5x yet. Let's think about how we would get that 5x. The x times x gets us the x squared, and whatever goes here and here will get us the 6. It's when we multiply the outsides and the insides 
that get us that, that x term, or that linear term. So those two are going to get added together to become 5x squared. So let's look at our choices here. Which of these, which of these will add up to 5? They all multiply to 6, but the only one that adds up to 5 would be 3 and 2. So they add up to 5 and they multiply to 6. So if I put a plus 3 right here and a plus 2 right here, you'll notice that if I were to multiply them, I would get 3x and 2x, which get us our 5x. So our factored form would be x plus 3 and x plus 2. So that is correctly factored. Let's take a look at this one over here. This one looks a little bit more complicated because this a value isn't 1. We call this a non-monic quadratic. So what two things could multiply to 6x squared? Well, we could go with 6x times 1x. We could do 3x times 2x. And then we could also do their negative versions, as, as you saw before. So we have to decide which of those we want to try out. And then we also have to deal with this negative 10 down here. What would multiply to negative 10? How about negative 10 and 1? Or negative 1 and 10? How about negative 2 and 5? Or negative 5 and 2? So if you think of all the possible combinations here that we could try, Okay, that's a lot. I'm going to try 6x and x. Let's just go with the negative 10 and 1. Now, I don't really know if I'm right. This really is a guess and check type game uh, until I multiply these out. So here I would get 6x squared plus 6x minus 10x minus 10. So notice I get my 6x squared and my negative 10, just like I knew I would, but these are only going to combine to negative 4x. So that's out. Now notice we tried these two together. That doesn't mean that 6x and 1x are, are bad, or that negative 10 and 1 are bad. It's just that together they're not good. So this could get really annoying. So I have another way of showing you how to do this one. Okay. So let's try this. I'm going to say that we start out with 6x times 6x. And you're going to say, well, well, where did that come from? That makes no sense whatsoever, because when they multiply, they get 36x squared. And I'll say, you're absolutely right. But that's not all I'm going to do. I'm going to divide by 6. So see what happens here. Yes, 6x times 6x does get us 36x squared. But if I divide that by 6, I'm back to 6x squared. So no problem. Now, let's look at this negative 10 a little bit differently. I am going to say that the 6, or the a value, times negative 10 is what we should be worried about. Okay. So that gets us negative 60. So I want to come up with the pairs of numbers that multiply to negative 60. Okay. So how about 1 and 60, one of them being negative, 2 and 30, 3 and 20. Again, all of these with one of them being negative. 4 times 15, 5 times 12, 6 times 10, and I think we'll be Yep, I think we got them all. We'll start repeating that list backwards. Okay, so now again, one of them being negative. Now, let's look at the b value over here. Which of these sets of numbers could possibly add up to 11? Well, if you look at them now, that they're all being positive numbers, um, none of them will add up to 11. But remember, one of them will be negative. Okay, so we want this to be a positive 11, so I say that we'd have to make all of these the negative, right? So we get a positive sum. Now, which of these add up to positive 11? Only this one. 
so let's use those right here, negative 4 and positive 15. All right. So now, looks like we've factored something. But remember this divide by 6 part, I have to take care of that. Okay, um, 6x minus 4, either that binomial will get divided by 6, or 6x plus 15 can get divided by 6. <sighs> That's really annoying, because 6x is divisible by 6, but 4 isn't, and 15 isn't. So I have another idea. Let's break up the 6. Let's break it up into 2 times 3. This way, I can divide the 6x minus 4 by the 2, and the 6x plus 15 over the 3. So let's see what we get. We get 3x minus 2, and we get 2x plus 5. Now, let's see. If you don't believe me, let's just multiply it and see what we get. That gets me 6x squared plus 11x minus 10. I don't know. This looks pretty good to me. So I would call this the A times C method. See, that's what really helped us here. We figured out what multiplies to A times C, and then which of those pairs added to B. Right? So this added to B. This was our A times C. But in the end, remember we had to divide by that 6 because we didn't want to get 36x squared. So that is how I would factor uh, these non-monic polynomials that have lots of combinations to try. Now you could also do guess and check. We could have sat there and tried it. I wasn't really in the mood. So in the next video, I'm going to show you some special quadratics. Just a reminder that you should try some Khan Academy practice problems, which can be found next to the link for the video.